I only have uh, a little bit of time left, but I, I did want to talk about crisis just a little bit. And if we don't finish this, it's fine. Um, I, can, I can run through and give you all the notes. Um, but I did want you to have this stuff in your mind because when we go through crisis, we need to be able to keep a kingdom mindset whenever we're going through these things. So there are all different types of crisis that we could face in life. We could have personal crisis, organizational crisis, community crisis, national crisis, or global crisis. There are all types of crises that we can end up going through in life. The one I want to address right now is personal crisis. We're going through somewhat of a community crisis right now, but I want to look at it from a personal perspective because regardless, at some point, this is going to hit you. We may not always be affected by, can we put that back up for just a few seconds? We may not always be affected by community crisis, and we may not always be affected by organizational, national, and global crisis, but all of us at some point are going to be affected by personal crisis, and personal crisis can come when you least expect it. And when you start going through crisis, that's the wrong time to try to find a book. There are things you need to know in your head ahead of time so that you can be able to, to address it and deal with it. So personal crisis, organizational crisis, community crisis, national crisis, and global crisis. Here's the first thing I would tell you about going through crisis. Now, I've even said this to my own children. Anytime you're going through crisis, keep doing the things that must be done. When you go through crisis and you allow the crisis to keep you from doing what's necessary, when you allow it to keep you from going to school, when you allow it to keep you from going to work, when you allow it to keep you from doing your studies, you're actually making the crisis worse. Because by the time the crisis is over, you've got a whole bunch of stuff you've got to be repairing and doing. So as much as physically and mentally possible, keep doing the things that must be done. Because here, here's the thing about uh, crisis. We have to understand that plans can change, but purpose does not. Plans change but purpose doesn't. So whether you're going through crisis or not, your purpose is still the same. Your assignment in life is still the same. None of that has changed. You still have to do what God has called you to do. So plans can change, that's fine, but purpose stays the same. Here's what the Bible says about that. It says, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. We have all kinds of plans in our mind, but it's God's purpose that's going to always be there. Our plans just change in terms of how we fulfill it. Here's another thing. It says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. It's our responsibility to plan, but it's up to God to determine how things will unfold in our lives. A second thing I would tell you to do in, in the middle of a crisis is to transform emotional energy into passion. Energy, emotions are energy. It's mental energy. It's physiological energy. Emotions is energy. You know, anything about science and the world that we live in, you know that energy is never really destroyed. It's just transferred from one thing to another. So when it comes to emotional energy, instead of spending so much time digging into the negative emotions, we need to take those emotions and convert them into passion. And that passion will give you a drive to start focusing on solutions. And those solutions will help you to learn how to deal with the crisis and address the problem that you're facing. James 1 and 20 says, For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Your, your anger is not going to ever be the solution. But if you can take your anger and you can turn it into passion, it can prepare you to do something that will eventually solve the crisis. And here's something else. Your life's assignment is connected to the things that make you angry. So when something makes you angry, that's fine. Emotions are information. Emotions are just information. They tell you how you feel about a situation, but it doesn't dictate how you're supposed to respond to it. So we have to understand that the things that make you angry is fine. It's fine that you're angry. Nothing wrong with being angry. But a lot of time, if something makes you exceptionally angry, then it may be connected to your life assignment. It may be connected to what God is calling you to do in your life because all of you are here to solve a problem. All of you are here to be a solution in our society. And the things in our society that make you angry, I'm not talking about your friend or the person next to you, that person make you mad, but I'm talking about things in our world that really make you angry are probably in some, some way connected with your life's assignment. We have to overcome hate with love. You overcome hate with love. You'll never overcome hate with hate. You'll never fix a situation by continually responding with anger and responding with hatred. That never fixes it. 
Only thing it does is prolong the situation. So overcome hate with love. Because here's something else. Every leader has a Judas. Every leader has a Judas. And every leader has a cross. And what do I mean by that? We know who Judas was in the Bible. He was the man that betrayed Jesus, right? When you are a leader and you're in a leadership position, there's always going to be at least one person who's going to be your Judas. And thank God for that Judas, because that Judas will prepare you toward your purpose. They're in your life to hurt you, to betray you, to hinder you, to stop you. Every leader, every leader has a Judas. Everybody has somebody that's going to hurt them. And every leader has a cross that you eventually be nailed to. Here's the thing about being nailed to a cross. That cross represents a turning point in your life where you truly move from life into tra- from death into transformational leadership, where you truly begin to live in freedom every single day. There's going to be some point in your life as a leader that is going to transform and transition you. And here's the funny thing about a cross, is that when it comes to nailing somebody to a cross, you can nail your own feet to the cross. You can nail one of your hands to the cross. But it's always going to take somebody else to nail that last hand to the cross. There's going to be somebody in your life as a leader It's going to betray you, they're going to hurt you, but that's going to be a defining moment for your leadership. That's going to be a defining moment for you as a, as, as, in terms of your character because crisis does not produce character. Crisis simply exhibits it. Crisis just shows you who you really are. And so when God gives you those opportunities to truly demonstrate who you are as a person, who he's created you to be, that crisis will prepare you toward your purpose. That's, that takes a kingdom mindset to be able to understand. Because when people hurt us, when people betray us, our natural instinct is to turn around and hurt them again. Our natural instinct is to fight back. But in a kingdom mindset, we recognize, I need this to transform me from where I am to where God needs me to be. You can't do that without a kingdom mindset. If you try to take that from a humanistic standpoint, it doesn't make sense and you won't have the energy to overcome it. But when I recognize as a kingdom citizen, this is the mind that I have to have, that's when I begin to change who I am. You have to be a transformed nonconformist. You have to be a transformed nonconformist. You allow God to transform you without you yourself being conformed into this world. You be the change. You be the one that produces a revolution. You be the one that brings change in your area. Here's something else, and I'm, I'm close to finishing. Refrain from making permanent decisions during temporary storms. Sometimes when we go through Christ, our first instinct is to give up and quit. We just want to walk away from everything and everybody. Do not make permanent decisions during temporary storms. Don't make big decisions when you're in the middle of a crisis. Because a lot of times you're not thinking properly. Be wise, be patient, and wait on God to direct you. You also have to recognize that life is seasonal. Crisis comes and crisis goes. When you find yourself in the midst of crisis, remember this thing has not come to stay. It's come to pass. It's not going to be this way forever. It's going to change. Life is seasonal. Genesis 8 and 22 says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Or the scripture saying life is going to always be changing. Life is going to always be different. And what you're going through right now, if you live with God right, you won't be going through this later on. This will pass. And you have to keep it in mind when you're going through Christ that it's not going to last forever. So learn to find the opportunity in crisis. Learn to find opportunity in it. That's always treasure in the midst of crisis. My my kids and I, my older ones, went and watched a movie last night, and there was a a point in that movie where there was a quote that really uh, stuck in my head, and it it was after the end of the movie, but we went and watched Black Panther last night. And um, at one point during the movie, he made this statement, Prince T'Challa did, uh, rather King T'Challa. He said, during crisis, the wise build bridges the foolish build barriers. So if you want to be wise in life, in the midst of a crisis, you've got to learn how to build those bridges 
not put a barrier around yourself and say, I'm never going outside of this barrier again because I'm so afraid of life and because life is going to hurt me and life is going to do something to me. Don't build barriers in the midst of crisis. That's personal crisis, emotional crisis, whatever you're going through. Don't put a barrier around yourself. The Bible says a foolish man isolates himself. Don't do it. You got to learn how to build bridges in the midst of crisis. Stay focused on your assignment. Stay focused. Stay focused. I remember when I was working on my doctorate degree, because I have a doctorate in education. And at the time when I started working on my doctorate degree, I was actually a single parent. And I was raising my kids on my own. And one of the things that my professor told me when I first started working on my doctorate degree, he said two things to me. He said, stay focused and persevere. Stay focused and persevere. And even when I got through all of that, you know, I still share that with students today. You stay focused and you just persevere. And you make life very, very simple. And finally this, make sure that you respond with faith and not fear. Respond with faith and not fear. When people do things like shooting up a school, their primary goal is to put fear in you. Their primary task is to make sure that you feel insecure when you sit at your school. And so when you respond with fear, you're actually giving them exactly what they wanted. You're helping them to, to achieve their goal and to achieve their purpose. But when you respond with love and you respond with faith, you recognize that the devil can't stop you, the devil can't stand you, and there's nothing he can do about it. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we're able to be under security of your kingdom. Father, we can't control everything that happens in this life. We can't make sense of everything that occurs in this world. But we do know that you love us. We do know that you care for us. And we do know, Father, that you have good intentions and good hope towards us. And so, Father, I pray that your blanket of security will fall on every student at HCS and their families and this community. That you will shield us, Father, from things that are not in line with your purpose, not in line with your intentions, and not in line with your plans. Help us, Father, to, to endure no matter what we face. And no matter what comes against us, Father, we can respond with faith and not fear recognizing that no weapon that is formed against us will ever be able to prosper, and that any tongue that rises up against us, your word says that you will condemn. We put our faith in you, not in man, not in principles, not in weapons, not in warfare, but we put our faith in you. May your name be praised, and may it be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much.